The average performer will never get the chance to star in a Broadway show. These are the stories of a college music theater program, its teachers, and their students, who are anything but average, and whose chances just got a whole lot better. People come back and for a reunion at a theater, and they're, they encounter, that's being torn down, and they encounter the younger versions of themselves. And so there's older folks and younger folks, and students are playing both of those, but there's some really old people <laughs> playing <laughs> by faculty. And we are the Whitmans, and there's my wife back there. Emily and I, well, Joanne and I are these, this old vaudeville couple who um, do a little number called Rain on the Roof, and it's this, Really cute, sweet little number. It's been really kind of cool to come in to this process to work alongside the kids um, to do what we do. Out and you know I, you know I want I don't want I don't want to botch things up. You know that's that's my big. Deal. I have the urge to see you one last time. 
a final chance to glorify the past, to stumble through a song or two, and lie about ourselves just a little. Hey, it's been great fun. <laughs> No power for four days, so we lost four run throughs that we were supposed to do prior to tech. So we were running around finding rooms that had enough daylight where we could do a run through in daylight with no heat and just the light coming through the windows, which we did. <laughs> So it put us behind. We, on an hourly, actually every other hour, my assistant Thomas was coming over here checking to see if we had power. Because we knew as soon as we had power, we had to all go into action. And that's what happened. It came on about 3 o'clock on Friday. They were in the theater by 4 o'clock. They were lighting till midnight. <laughs> it was crazy. <laughs> Everybody has had the most wonderful attitudes about it. It really pulled everybody together. Wendy and I uh, went to the same studio. Uh, we uh, trained together, and since then, Wendy has uh, started in Jubilee in Vegas, uh, did Folies Bergère in Vegas, did Lido de Paris in Paris, has been to Spain, Tokyo, Bahamas. Sure. And then she also uh, toured the US and Canada with Bette Midler and was filmed for the Bette Midler HBO special, which she's called Experience the Divine. There we go. And she's done Will Rogers' Follies, Crazy For You, and then we actually got to work together at Radio City in New York and also doing a production of Making Whoopi in Houston, Texas. This has been so much fun. These kids are amazing. They're giving it like 100% and it's, it's been a dream to work with them. Like, they have such great energy. They're so eager to learn. They've done an amazing job. I'm so proud of all of them. Leaves me Charlotte Ray was my classmate, and along about 1947-48, uh, somewhere in there, she had gone to New York on the Christmas break, and when she came back, she sought me out, and she had an LP in her hand and said, Sheldon, you have to hear this, and she handed me an album of Finian's Rainbow, and I listened to it, and I was just blown away by what Yip Harburg had done. The, the music I loved, too, but Yip's lyrics were so imaginative and so playful, and uh, in Finian's in particular, he was addressing rather serious things, but so playfully that I thought, even if you disagreed with him, you had to be entertained by them, and perhaps you would be influenced by what he was writing. But when I heard Finian's Rainbow, I thought, no, that's what I want to do. I want to write 
get in there. He will not marry me. No, he will not marry me. Rectangular is a hotel door. My true love tried to sneak through. <laughs> what bothered me, and apparently it did not bother the rest of you, but what bothered me was the tempo. To me, by slowing it down, and then by slowing it down even more as you got to the last three lines of each stanza, you were saying, now listen close, because this is funny. Okay. You know? And I didn't like that. I thought, let the audience discover it themselves. Don't, don't insist on it. Don't tell them. While you were singing, uh, you kept veering away from the person you were singing to. And uh, I thought, who is he singing to now? Now he's singing to them, now, now he's singing to her. So that was inconsistent. But you will find that these are special apples that give you something more. Uh, but even within that inconsistency, the characterization was consistent. And uh, it was very seductive. So uh, Thank you. <laughs> I, I have no complaints on that score at all. Singing for Sheldon was almost an out-of-body experience. Like, Fiddler is one of the first shows I did, and it's one of the shows that made me fall in love with theater. And so when I heard that he was coming this year at all, it was my like heart stopped because he's one of the greats, like one of the greatest of the greats. And then when I found out I got to sing for him, I was as delighted. And today it was just like it was honestly kind of a dream come true to be able to talk to him, perform to him, perform for him, be coached by him, get feedback from him, and listen to him just talk about his life and his his work and his passion for his art. He's an incredible man. And his resiliency and the fact that he's still doing what he loves every day is is inspirational. It really like replenishes you. I was lying at her feet. If this craziness increases, our affairs will go to pieces. I'm in love. I'm in love. I'm in love. I'm, in love. I'm starstruck. Yeah, it was <laughs> surreal. It was just like such an honor. Yeah, and he was, you know, he was really honest, which is exactly what I always want. Right. So and so supportive. Yeah. It was just yeah. nice to know that on the artistic side, the lyricist is so behind the performers. Performing for the writer is like the ultimate challenge, I think. Yeah, I was excited though, because you know that they love music theater as much as we do. So, um, I don't know, I don't know. i excited and very, very nervous. Yeah. Still am, actually. <laughs> I don't write poems very often. Most of the time when I start to write a poem, halfway through I think, nah, this should be a lyric. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I wrote, it's called On Working in the Theater. Knowing of the sniper, Nevertheless, I stood, waved my arms, sang, danced, smiled. In bright light, naked and afraid, I stood, knowing of the waiting gun. Surprised and not surprised, wounded, I fell, bled, sighed, died. What was most meaningful to do, I did. What else could I have done? Thank you, Sean.